All right, I'm actually excited about this month's real estate stats. You may not be because it's boring, but I'll try to make it less boring as much as possible. The reason why I'm excited for it is because September's numbers just got released. Last month in August, well, there's nothing going on in the summer months for real estate because everybody's thinking about vacations. Nobody's thinking about big major moves. They're also thinking about kids on vacation and stuff like that, just dealing with that. That's already headaches as it is. Um, so sellers don't really sell, but in September, the market's back. And traditionally, there's two markets. It's either the spring market or the fall market. Let's see how the fall market it's shaping up. Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends and talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. The number that's probably most in your mind is the average price. So I'm here to tell you, spoiler alert, nothing's really happened. It's kind of a flat market, but it is kind of exciting because people are off vacations and they're looking to make purchase decisions again. The year over year prices have dropped by only 1%, so relatively it's still kind of flat, but month over month has gone up a little bit. It's gone up by 3 point something percent. We're at 1.1 million on average price for all of the Toronto real estate board from all housing types. That's condos, semis, detached everything that's residential. You know, that's not a bad number for 1.1 million. I mean, that is quite a bit of a drop from the February 2022 average price, which was at 1.33 million from what I remember. So we're down 17%. So there's still a buying opportunity if you're looking to get into the market. And if you're looking to trade up, I think it's a great opportunity as well too, because you're gonna sell low, but you're also gonna buy low as well too. So to make that jump upwards, it's a good opportunity. I just think there's always chances for people to move and there's opportunities out there because people need to move right? No matter what. The investor markets have dried up though. I mean, there's not a ton of people buying investment properties because mortgages are still high and that really affects your numbers. So unless you have little leverage and you're just using pretty much all cash or at least 50% cash, then it doesn't make sense to be an investor right now. Although if you want to time the market, you know, there's a good argument to say that this is a bottom of the market or very close to it anyway. For sales volume, that's another important metric in the real estate market because you wanna make sure that there's enough people making buying decisions or selling decisions so there's enough volume of transactions going on. Right now, there's just under 5,000 transactions, which still is kind of in line with everything that's happened for the past two years. We're not too far off for September's. The previous September, 4,600, so we're up a little bit, but the previous one before that in 2022, just after the rate hiking cycle, is pretty much the same, just around 5,000 sales as well too. So year over year from last year, because we had a huge dip, we're actually up 8.5% in terms of sales volume, and we're also up 0.4% from last month, so relatively the same, relatively flat. You know, that's a big, big drop from before the rate hikes began when we were in COVID. It was like kind of record high numbers. We saw 9,000 sales in September 20. 21, which I don't know if I'll ever see that again, at least not for a while. So relatively, you can expect a flat market around 5,000 sales. And that's not like a flat market, right? That's still a lot of people moving. If you look at the number of people out there or the number of houses, and we're projected to have about 65,000 sales this year alone. So that really works out to just under 8%. That's not too bad. One divided by 12 is 8.3%. So yeah, if 8% of the volume is happening for this month, it, like we're kind of on track, I guess, if everything was flat, if you look at numbers that way. Look, you can't look at these numbers too much. The math will drive you insane. Don't time the market. If it's the right time for you to make a move, make a move. If it's not the right time, don't make a move. Like if you don't feel secure with your job or you know you don't have enough money or whatever, just don't try to limp in, like I said in the last video. I think really you should just do it based on your own decisions because who knows, these numbers could change tomorrow. Actually, they probably will change tomorrow or at least for next month. You can never really rely on just looking at numbers too much. Just you can drive yourself insane, analysis paralysis, you're not gonna make moves and it's just not the right thing to do. If you're looking to get into the market, I would encourage you to really study what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a condo, or if you're looking for a house, or you're looking for a development lot, or you're looking for a rental, whatever, or even your own family home. I would just really encourage you to really look deep down into the market and see what's happening and get familiar with it. And then you'll be able to spot a good deal when you see one. Be aware of what's happening in the market and just don't time it, that's all. New listings is something that people have been freaked out about and same with active listings as well too. So new listings receive 18,000 new listings in September. Over a year, it's been 10% more and month over month, there's 44% more new listings onto the market. That's kind of expected. Again, nobody really does any activity in August. No one's selling their home. They're waiting for the fall market to come out. So um, of course, we're gonna see an uptick in volume. 10% more than last year, that's not the end of the world. So looking at the new listings number by itself in isolation really doesn't do much. What I usually pair this one with is the sales to new listings ratio. So if you divide the two numbers together, in theory, for every sale that actually happens, 
there should be uh, two new listings that come onto the market. One to replenish what's sold and the other one for next month. It should be a two to one ratio. It should be 50% sales to new listings ratio. And that's a nice, perfectly balanced market where nobody's fighting for overbidding on places. I understand that every market's different. Like if you're looking at a million dollar or even like a 1.3, four or $5 million, even like even under $3 million in some pockets. Um, if you're looking for a detached home or a freehold home around that price point, depending on what market you're at, it's gonna be bidding wars. Like there's one in, uh, I just posted on Instagram if you saw or not. In the Christie Pitts area, there's 30 offers on this beautiful semi-detached. Beautiful, sure, but 30 offers, that's a lot of buyers out there. Whereas in some condo markets, it's, it's kind of crickets out there. So new listings by itself doesn't really tell you anything, but the sales to new listings ratio at just under 40%, it's still kind of relatively flat. Like there, you can have a chance to negotiate. And again, it depends on what housing type you're looking at. Active listings though, that made the news for the past little while. We saw a huge uptick in active listings. So active listings, how they calculate that is at the end of the month, they look at, they take a snapshot in the Toronto Real Estate Board and they see how many active properties haven't been sold yet, right? Because it's hard to determine how many are unsold if it's in the middle of the month. So they gotta look at the end of the month, see what's unsold. And at the end of September, there's 25,000 new listings, sorry, active listings on the market. And um, that's up by 35% from last year, which, you know, it's kind of expected. There's, it's a little bit slow over market. And last month, of course, there's 13% uh, more active inventory, leftover inventory, if you will. And again, this number by itself doesn't really tell you anything. It's, if you look at the active number of listings, divide that by the number of sales. So in theory, if that pace of sales is going at 5,000 a month with 25,000, it should be five months before all the active inventory gets eaten up, right? Assuming that, you know, like some properties will never sell because, you know, they're just like listed over market and just don't make sense, right? So they're sitting there forever, really stale. In theory, just they're all like widgets and just all the same kind of cookie cutter. Everything's just the same. And no matter what you buy is the same. If you have 5,000 sales and 25,000 active inventory, it would just take you five months to blow through that. Simple as that. So um, divide those two numbers out. And for some reason, you're gonna get 3.4 months. Why is that? 5,000 sales divided by three, what? How does that make sense? Two, five, six, one, two divided by four, nine, nine, six. Yeah, it's five months. It's weird. It looks to me that there's five months of inventory, but I could be wrong. They're saying 3.4 months. I don't know how they calculate this. I guess they take like a trend of it. If somebody's watching this, please somebody tell me what's happening. But anyway, the past couple decades, we saw like two months of inventory, right? Maybe even less than that. Like I remember when it was like, the super peak, like back in 2018 or something like that before around there, or even in the middle of COVID, it was actually less than one month of inventory. And that was a lot. As soon as something lists, instantly you get multiple offers. The most I ever saw was something like 80 offers. That was insane. Over the past, you know, I've been doing this for 19 years. So over the past couple decades, two months of inventory was kind of like good. And it, it wasn't a fun market. Like if you remember, like everything you're buying, you had to bid right? Because money was cheap and it kind of made sense for the past two decades. But now that time is over. Um, I'm hearing reports of like four to five to six. That's kind of like a normal balanced market. But like who really knows what that number is, right? I mean, if you look at the states, some markets are seeing like eight months of inventory. There's no real firm number to say that this is kind of where it should be at. We're just only looking at relative to what has happened in the history, right? If we're looking at 3.4 months, which I don't know how to calculate that, let's call it five months of inventory. That's not great compared to two months of inventory that we've seen over the past two decades. It is what it is. That just means there's more active inventory out there. And it means that if you're selling a property, you gotta make it show perfect. There's a lot of like little tricks and tips that you can get from your realtor and it's hopefully that'll be us. Obviously, I think good pictures matter, but before you do good pictures, you gotta have good staging. So that means you gotta declutter everything, make a show ready. Like when a buyer is walking into a place, they don't wanna see all your personal items. They don't wanna see all the clutter. Not very many people can see past that. They say they can, but in my experience, they can't. But when you go to like a model home, everything's just beautiful, like perfect. Or like a model home or like any kind of luxury furniture store that you might see. It's just like, you know, you go to Restoration Hardware, for example, everything's just perfect. You just fall in love with the place, right? That's what you want to make your home look like. So you do that, then you get the photos done, and then it comes with the marketing and advertising and pushing out to as many people as possible. If your property is just done perfectly and executed perfectly, it's like a beauty pageant. Only the beautiful ones will win. So if you can do that, and if you're selling something, those are the ones that will help get ahead of the market, and you won't be the rest of the people that are like 25,000 stale active inventory listings. Okay, so hopefully that was a quick one, ran through the numbers. I was excited for September's numbers because it tells us if there's a huge uptick, but there's no surprise, the market's still kind of flat. 
I'm looking forward to more future rate cuts. We'll see if it brings some life back to the market because ultimately we have a ton of immigration and we have a huge housing shortage to like it's fundamental housing shortage. It's not going anywhere. It's like two decades of underbuilding, tons of immigration piling on top of that, nowhere else to live. And we have a huge affordability crisis. So things, you know, there's, I'm seeing a lot more things get a little creative with density and zoning and fourplexes, garden suites, roommates. I'm just seeing a lot of new innovations, even land leases. There's a lot of new innovations coming to make real estate more affordable for the general population. But at the end of the day, we're in Toronto. It's the largest market in Canada. Still a major city, the top major cities in the world, right? It's not New York. It's not Hong Kong, not Paris, I get it. But like Toronto is still great if you need to be in Canada. It's a diverse, multicultural, safe place that is a fabulous place to live as much as us locals don't like to uh, admit it. But if you travel the world, you'll realize that it's a great place to live. If you click the link below, you can book a 15 minute consultation to talk. If you have any questions, you wanna get in depth about your situation and have some personalized advice on what to do in your situation. Thanks for watching. Add it up. Thanks for sticking out to the very end. I hope you got some value out of this. Do me a favor, please press like and subscribe, but more than anything, leave me some feedback so we know what to produce for you going forward. Thanks again.